Welcome back to Fox Explainer. Today I am going to show you a drama, thriller movie from 2018 called Hippopotamus. Spoilers ahead. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Watch out and take care. At the beginning of the movie, we see a young woman who has been hurt slowly coming to in what seems to be a completely white room. When she opens her eyes, she panics and tries to get up, but she can't. It turns out that her legs are hurt and covered in bandages. As the woman looks around, a sinister male voice tells her she overslept. The man introduces himself as her kidnapper, Thomas Salcroft. He tells the woman that he plans to keep her captive until she falls in love with him. He then tells her her name is Ruby Watts and other details about her life, like where she is from and where she went to college. He even tells her about her parents' jobs and how he knows she is afraid of the dark. Ruby has no idea how she ended up in Thomas's care, nor does she remember her life before she was taken. She is crying and asks Thomas what he has done to her, referring to the wounds on her knees. Thomas tells her that he tore her ligaments and tells her to stop moving if she ever wants to walk again. He also tells her that he didn't touch her private things, which are in a black handbag sitting on a chair by the door. On the floor next to Ruby, we see what looks like a meal and a small cup with two pills in it. Thomas says that he gave her a birth control pill and a painkiller. He then tells Ruby what their life together will be like. He'll feed her every day, and he'll help her wash and go to the bathroom. Her days will start at 7 a.m. and end at 11 p.m., and she won't be able to get away because they are miles away from the next house. When Thomas is done, Ruby asks him if he hit her. He tells her that he didn't. Thomas then leaves the room, leaving Ruby by herself. As the scene comes to an end, Ruby looks down at her bracelet and sees that it says Ruby x Ruby is still in the same place the next day as she was the day before. Thomas made her a meal, and the empty plate next to her shows that she ate it, but she didn't touch the pills. Thomas walks into the room to check on her and sighs in disappointment when he sees that Ruby hasn't taken the pills. He begs her to take the medicine because her pain will only get worse if she doesn't, but she doesn't listen. Ruby asks Thomas why he's doing all of this as he's leaving the room, but he doesn't answer. Thomas leaves the room, and as the door slams shut, cutting the scene to black, we hear Ruby's desperate cry from the other side. Thomas goes back to see Ruby later that same day. This time, a dark red light shades the room to show that it's nighttime. Thomas carefully moves Ruby's sleeping body so that she lies in a fetal position on the floor, and then he leaves the room. The next morning, Thomas brings Ruby breakfast. Ruby is still sound asleep, but Thomas wakes her up when he knocks on the wall. Once he leaves, Ruby's sleepy and dazed look changes into a serious one, showing that she was just pretending to be sleepy. She then makes her way to her handbag, which is on the other side of the room. She opens it, rummages through it, and pulls out her mirror, which holds her ID. Ruby stares at it, confused. After seeing a shadow through a tiny window, she quickly put her things back in her bag but a small plastic bag got out and rolled away. Ruby scoots back to her usual spot and sees the ball. She reaches for it and manages to hide it in her pocket before Thomas comes into the room. Thomas brings her a tray of food and checks her face. He notices that she is in pain and says she should have told him. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a pill bottle. He tells Ruby to take a higher dose, and she does. He hands her the pills and then leaves. Later, we see what looks to be a woman floating in dark water. It turns out that it was a piece of Ruby's dream. She wakes up upset and tries to get up, but stops when a sharp pain runs through her legs. Thomas is already in the room and is sitting in a chair close to Ruby. Ruby asks him who he is and what he did to her. Thomas tells her calmly the same thing he told her the first time she saw him in the room. That his name is Thomas O'Croft, and that he plans to keep her prisoner until she falls in love with him. He keeps repeating the same things he knows about her. Ruby asks what he has done to her legs. Thomas tells her it was a necessary procedure to make it harder for her to run away, and that her legs will get better as time goes on. He tells her that all she needs to do is stay compliant and take her medicine. By giving her birth control pills, he reassures her that he doesn't have any bad intentions that he's not telling her about. Ruby is reminded of her daily schedule and how slim her chances are of getting away. She stays quiet until Thomas turns to leave the room. She again asks him if he hurt her. This makes Thomas mad, so he throws her bag as he leaves the room. When she's alone, Ruby looks at the ball she hid in her pocket. She also takes a closer look at her bracelet. Later, we see the rest of Ruby's day. Thomas giving her psychic therapy, him bathing her with washcloths, 
and Ruby repeatedly slamming the ball on the room's door when it's nighttime. The next day, Ruby notices the cut on the back of her head. She goes to her bag and pulls out a mirror, but it's hard to see much of her injury. She ends up breaking the mirror into smaller pieces and putting it close to her wound. Before she could see anything, she notices Thomas watching her from the other side of the door. She hides the glass shard under the bandage on her left knee and tries to go back to where she usually sits. Before she does, Thomas comes into the room and drugs her. Once it's nighttime, Thomas plays sounds that are meant to stop Ruby from moving and escaping. He continues to clean and rearrange the room and ends up falling asleep on the chair. His phone's alarm wakes him up. He turns off the discouraging music, puts Ruby in an upturned position, and leaves. Then, we see a series of days that Thomas and Ruby spend together. During these days, Thomas brings Ruby food and helps her with her hygiene, and Ruby spends most of her nights playing catch with her ball. One morning, Ruby is seen playing with the sink pipes. The mess she made doesn't seem to bother Thomas when he comes in to bring her breakfast. While he looks into what she did, Ruby asks if she can ask him a question. She asks him what will happen if she doesn't fall in love with him and if she will be held captive forever if she doesn't. She goes on to make a joke about what Thomas did to her legs. Thomas asks her what he can give her, which confuses Ruby. Thomas says she must be feeling better because she's joking about her situation. Thomas says that she must be getting bored and offers to bring her something to make her stay more pleasant. Ruby thinks for a moment and then tells Thomas to bring her a pillow, a blanket, and a book to read to pass the time. Thomas agrees, then asks her about the two pencil drawings on the wall, one of a chair and one of a brain. She says they are pretty. Thomas tells her that she looks better and asks her to repeat what she wanted to be brought to her, which she does. The next day, Ruby is sitting on a mattress with a pillow next to her. Thomas steps in and gives her a book. After she looks through it, she says she's read it before. Ruby feels overwhelmed because that book is the only thing she remembers from before she was taken captive. Thomas tells Ruby that she could get some of her memories back if they are triggered by certain things, which gives her a glimmer of hope. Thomas offers to help her get her memory back, and she thanks him. Later, when Thomas brings her food, he asks Ruby if there is anything else she wants. She says she wants a red bush tea, and he brings it to her right away. After smelling it, Ruby remembers something. She smiles and asks Thomas if he knew she was going to pick this tea. He smiles and tells her that it is the only thing she drinks. Ruby asks him how he knows all that about her, and he says that he did his research. Later in the day, Ruby is seen looking at her book. She finds a page with what looks like random letters, but when she puts the mirror piece she hid earlier on the letters, she sees that some of the letters spell out don't trust him in the mirror. Thomas carefully walks into the room seconds later with a table. As it turns out, Thomas wanted them to have dinner together, which they do. Thomas asks Ruby about the book, and Ruby praises it, especially the ending. Thomas smiles and tries to take Ruby's hand in his, but Ruby pulls away. Thomas asks Ruby what's wrong. Ruby is hesitant at first, but she asks Thomas how many other people were held captive before her. Thomas denies her accusations, but Ruby is determined to find out the truth. She then says that Thomas has stalked, enslaved, beaten, and killed young women like her. Before she can continue, Thomas bangs his fist on the table, which startles her. He wipes the blood off his arm and denies her accusations again. Ruby says she doesn't want Thomas to do this to anyone else because she thinks what they have is special. Thomas swears that there is no one else and walks out of the room. When Thomas leaves, Ruby's scared face goes away, showing the audience that she was just acting. The next day, Thomas tells Ruby that her legs are healing but they need more time. When he leaves, Ruby takes the bandages off her legs and looks at her injury. It looks like her legs went cut. She manages to get up and walk to the door. When she touches the doorknob, she recalls a memory of a man and Ruby standing in front of her front door. Ruby gives up trying to open the door and returns to her bed. As she is trying to figure out what the strange message in her book means, she smudged the ink that was used to write the message. When she smells the ink on her hand, a new memory comes to her mind. This time, she is hiding something behind a brick in the room. Ruby pulls the brick off, and a dozen matches fall out. This shows that the mysterious messages were written with the matches. Later, Thomas and Ruby are eating dinner. Ruby asks for a candle to set a romantic mood. Once Thomas brings it to her and lights it using a match, he goes on to tell her that they should start over, and Ruby agrees. Ruby then tells Thomas about a recurring dream she's been having about sinking deep underwater. 
As she tells the details of her dream, her hand moves closer to the match. She tells Thomas that her dreams end when a hand reaches out to save her. At the end of her story, her hand is on the match, but Thomas has his hand on hers. Ruby fakes a cough and puts her hand to her chest to take the match without Thomas noticing. In the next scene, we'll see how Ruby's days are going. She's writing in her book, working out her legs, and practicing how to use the broken part of her mirror as a weapon. While Thomas is helping her to walk again, she acts like her legs aren't in great shape. At the end of the scene, we notice that Ruby wrote play along in her book. The next morning, Ruby is seen doing push-ups. She rushes to bed as soon as she hears Thomas coming toward her room. So no one will think she's hiding something, she pretends to read her book. Thomas says that he should help her exercise her legs before dinner, and she agrees. As Thomas helps Ruby to walk, she again acts as if her legs are hurt. After they make it to the other side of the room, Thomas congratulates her on her progress and says that if they keep going this way, they might be able to have dinner upstairs. In the evening, Thomas and Ruby are eating dinner again. Thomas says that this is a very special meal and tells Ruby to try it. After she takes a bite, Ruby unlocks another memory. This one is of her and Thomas having dinner at a restaurant. They seem to be out on a date and are comfortable with each other. Thomas then asks Ruby to close her eyes and puts on an necklace he bought for her. He kisses her on the forehead. We then got back to the present. Ruby is shocked and asks Thomas if they've been together before. Thomas nods his head and tells Ruby that the meal she remembers well was their anniversary meal. Ruby gives him a smile through tears. At night, Ruby can be seen brushing her teeth. As she looked at the two drawings Thomas hung on the wall, she noticed R.W. written in one of the corners. In the morning, Ruby sees someone in a boat when she looks out of a small window in her room. Later, she and Thomas are talking about her book. Thomas said how Ruby couldn't be without her book. He starts to talk about their pastimes together. As he tells his story, the scene changes to Ruby's drawing, which is surrounded by many other crayon drawings. Thomas is sound asleep in her bed. When she was sure he was out for good, Ruby went quietly to the door. Before she opens it, Thomas says it's cold outside, so she needs a coat. Instead of opening the door, she reaches down to pick up her ball as Thomas slowly wakes up. The scene ends with Ruby saying that she can't sleep. In the beginning of the next scene, Ruby is sleeping in bed and Thomas is covering her with a blanket. This reminds Ruby of another memory of what seems to be her and Thomas being intimate. The next day, Thomas dances with Ruby, which brings up another memory. The memory is of Ruby and Thomas dancing at a party while Thomas tells her he loves her. Ruby tells him she feels the same way and they kiss. After having the memory, Ruby tells Thomas that she is now sure that they were together. Later, Thomas explains how the remote control for the room's electronics works. He turns on some music, and Ruby starts dancing for him. The two laugh and kiss, but before they get too close, Ruby starts crying. Ruby asks him how they got here, and Thomas agrees to explain it to her. As Thomas is telling the story, the scene shifts to the past. We see Ruby waiting for Thomas in a bar. She is with her roommate Nick, who is openly flirting with her. Thomas missed the train and can't get to her in time, so Ruby and Nick leave to go home. Thomas tells Ruby that he's being picked up by his friend Rob and that he hopes to see her soon. Nick tries to kiss Ruby, but she refuses, so he keeps trying. He knocks her out and brutally surpasses her. Thomas saw what had happened when he went to Ruby's house. He killed Nick, who was still drunk, and carried Ruby to Rob's car. Rob drove them both to Thomas' house, where Ruby regained consciousness. It turns out Ruby lost her memory because of what happened with Nick. Before Rob can call for an ambulance, Thomas stops him. They argue for a bit, but Rob agrees to help Thomas with his plan to get Ruby's memory back. They go far north, where Thomas breaks up with Rob and thanks him for helping. Thomas then takes Ruby to an abandoned island farm where he keeps her as a prisoner. As time goes on, Thomas starts to learn about retrograde amnesia, a form of amnesia in which a person forgets everything before an attack. He also learned that Ruby's memory seemed to go back to how it was right after the attack whenever she slept a lot. Thomas then shows Ruby pictures to help her remember, but she doesn't respond at first. Thomas taught her how to bring back certain memories and control her sleep patterns so she could learn for more than a day. When he gives her her favorite book, Ruby responds and shows progress. Thomas keeps trying, but he decides he needs a clean slate to really win Ruby's trust and memory back. So, he builds the white room and makes up the whole story about cutting Ruby's leg ligaments and being her kidnapper. When Thomas finishes his story, Ruby is left crying and seems to remember what happened. 
the two become close and fall asleep on each other. Ruby wakes up first and turns off Thomas's watch before it can ring his alarm. She takes the broken mirror piece and stabs him with it. She starts crawling to get away, but Thomas tries to stop her. She kicks him with her feet and manages to get away to the outside. She looks up at the sky in fear, then runs to the boat but passes out before she can escape. She wakes up in a hospital room, where a doctor tells her she'll be fine but that she may have some short-term memory loss because of her injury. The doctor is revealed to be Thomas, who again set up a different situation to try to gain Ruby's trust and help her remember. That's all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more and hit the like button to help me out, and also leave a comment. If you want me to explain your favorite film, until next time take care.